Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we are checking out a brand new 2024 Cedar Creek Cottage 40 CFK2 model. This is the 25th anniversary edition. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you through the inside and outside of this beautiful park model, and then we will close it up at the end and show you what it looks like closed as well. We will be right back on the inside. All right, we are up inside the brand new 2024 Cedar Creek Cottage 40 CFK2 destination trailer here. We're gonna kind of run you through the inside and head on back out after we learn a little bit here. So let's start up here in the kitchen area. As you've seen on the floor plan, this is a front kitchen rear bedroom model. So some of the new changes for 2024 are gonna be new countertops. So they did change up their countertop style Sinks changed up a little bit. Some of the hardware on your cabinetry is also changed up. You have the soft close cabinet doors and drawers. They have magnetic catches on them now. Some light switches, electric outlet, USB charger port down there. Full extending ball bearing drawer guided drawers. Large undermount stainless sink. Big windows overlooking the front of the RV. Now they're currently covered up with the protective cover when they're in travel mode. Um, so you can't really see out obviously. You have day and night pull down roller shades. So you got kind of an extra screen there. Lots of cabinet drawers big amount of storage in that lower section below the sink. And then you have cabinet on the left side and also a cabinet on the right side there. Another new feature for the 2024 is gonna be the Furion package here that they've changed up. Uh, now has a Furion 12 volt refrigerator. So you have a two drawer freezer on bottom and it also still has an ice maker. And then you have the large refrigerator part on top. And then there's some storage up above that refrigerator as well. Over here, you can see the new Furion oven. Has a pull-out drawer below the oven as well. Light-up knobs. Three-burner cooktop. And really nice solid surface countertops over there as well. The backsplash also changed up. You got electric outlet on each side. And then you have a little rack on there as well. Furion microwave and some storage above and beside that microwave. The island here gives you tons of counter space. You could even throw a couple extra little bar stools here if you wanted to. There's a little LED lighting here, but that little fold down shelf just kind of makes it really nice giving you extra room in here or extra counter space if you need it. On this side of the island, you can see in the picture popping up here, you have five drawers and quite a bit of storage space underneath of there as well. Now here's something that's kind of neat that they did on this top drawer here also have USB charger port built in back here and you have a little divider in there as well. Over here you have the Thomas Payne trifold sofa. So this sofa will flip out and make into a bed so you could sleep two extra guests here if you needed to. You have electric outlet next to it. Nice large window there looking out the back side of the RV. Then you have quite a bit of overhead cabinet space up there as well. Now, sitting down here in my power theater seat, looking straight ahead, we have an electric fireplace, which is basically a fancy electric space heater. 
There's a little shelf and drawer. We'll show you that drawer here shortly. Uh, but you can see that popping up in the picture as well. There is an Insignia TV right there, smart TV. Looking on up, we have turbo exhaust fan up there and a ceiling fan as well. It's a 110 volt ceiling fan instead of a 12 volt version. Some nice hang down pendant lighting, some accent lighting above our slide out fascia up there. And you also have your Bluetooth speaker in the ceiling up here and one of your two Coleman 15,000 BTU ACs. They are both ducted. One is up here and the other one's back in the bedroom. You'll see when we get back there. Now let's just check this stuff out here real quick. So you seen in the picture that was up, just kind of neat little hidden drawer right there just to kind of stash out of the way. Over here is another change up. They did this Murphy pantry last year. Um, but they changed it up a little bit this year, so it's a little different looking here. And they put in some little drawers down below. There's an electric outlet down there also. Your cable satellite outlets as well. Little coat hook over there. And you also have another electric outlet up top. There's a light in here. And these are adjustable shelves. So you could remove the little pegs and change around the shelving. So that part kind of changed up a little bit. There is some shelving on the back of the door, uh, HDMI connector here. Let's kind of step back so you can see this. A couple electric outlets down there. Now it's held back by a magnet when you are uh, stationary, but if you are going to travel, there's a travel rod right here that goes through and locks it for travel and you basically just kind of reach up under here and slide the bar across to lock it into place. Now let's spin around here to your big slide out on the awning or door side area right here. So new for this year is going to be this little bench set up here. Um, the freestanding table and chairs. So you got two traditional chairs, the bench, all oh, that bench does have storage in it, by the way, you can see that pop up in the picture. Uh, there's an electric outlet under there. Now, I'm not sure if they're gonna do it on the park models, but on the fifth wheels, they are supposedly going to be doing a table that mounts to the wall instead of having the post come down the middle. Uh, I haven't seen that yet, so we'll get one of those in. We'll get those videoed up for you here soon. But that is one of the things they were going between, whether it's going to be this table or the one mounted to the wall. On the fifth wheels, I'm pretty sure it's going to be mounted to the wall. I think on the park models, they're going to keep this one uh, just so they can keep the little bit larger windows and not have to shorten up the windows a little bit. But we will see as time moves on. There's USB charger ports in the middle. You have a couple light switches there, some decorative lighting up top. Again, pull down night roller shades and day shade as well. Over there, the power theater seat has USB charger ports built into it, cup holders and some storage as well. Now looking down below here, you can see the slide floor is covered with this like woven material. They use this stuff in like pontoon boats and stuff. Uh, so it's not actually carpet it's pretty heavy duty nice material and they also changed up the slide floor they're no longer using like a osb board or a plywood in their slide out floor they've actually gone to this really nice expensive composite material floor um, that hopefully will be a really long lasting floor that you don't have to worry about it getting damaged by water but again, it's one of those things we will see what works out in the future. Back here, we have the sliding glass door area. That is a double pane sliding glass door. Also, I forgot to mention on the windows, single pane windows are standard. Double pane windows are an option. This particular one was ordered with dual pane windows. Ceiling fan light switch here, your 
Comfort, RV Comfort Control controls both air conditioners and your propane furnace. Uh, you can also opt in for like a heat pump or something on some of these air conditioners if you want. Turbo exhaust fan controls, temperature sensor for your AC. It does come with some little hang down curtain thing to block out your uh, sliding glass doors here, but they do not put that in until after you receive the RV. The factory does not want those installed. You would have to install that yourself just in case the door comes open in transit. You don't want the curtain getting sucked out the window and damaging something. I've seen that happen on these things, on park models in general. Large turbo exhaust fan up top, a big skylight up here. Nice large medicine cabinet area there. Hanging little towel hooks on each side, little robe hook over there as well. Electric outlet in the center. Dual vanity sink right there. New countertops. Six drawers. Motion light in the middle there. And then you also have LED light down below. Little shelf space over here. Now over here you have the one-piece fiberglass shower with a sit-down seat. I know this is going to be changing up supposedly in the fifth wheel. I'm still waiting to figure it out. Uh, once I get one in, you'll be able to check that out as well. But they're going to be doing, I think, one of those flip-down seats or something in there. Nice little shower head area there also. And then over here you have a pretty good amount of linen and towel space and stuff here as well. And there's some storage up there if you wanted to, or, or shelf space, counter space, whatever. You want to set something up there, get it out of your way. You have sliding door here for privacy in your bathroom area. Porcelain, foot flush toilet. Going on back a little further, we have a little more hallway space here to get us into the bedroom area. So you got a few lights up here. Entry exit door here on the left. And then down below, electric box with some breakers and fuses. Spin around here so you can kind of see what is in this little area right here. So up here, there are some controls for your awning, slide outs, uh, some light switches, 12 volt tank heaters for cold weather camping, porch light, uh, water pump if you got to use your portable water, black, gray, fresh, battery condition, all your meters right here. There is a little coat hook area right here as well. Another little temperature sensor for your second day seat. I do have both ACs running. I'm not real sure how well that's playing out in this video, um, but they're not real loud. Um, they're not quite as quiet as the old Whisper Quiets that they used back in uh, 2022 versions, but still a really nice AC system. So another ceiling fan up here, 110 volt instead of 12 volt. Huge window overlooking the rear of the RV. You have Large overhead cabinets, little shelf space in the middle with USB charger port. There's little shelf space above each window, and again, USB charger ports there. Electric outlet on each side as well. These new little shelves that they went to for 2024, uh, these are metal. Uh, so that part did change up a little bit from last year's version. A window on each side does open still. There is a decent amount of room to maneuver around the sides of the bed. Now the bed will raise up. You can see in that picture popping up there, there is storage underneath the bed and a little bit at the foot of the bed as well. Spinning around here at the foot of the bed, you can see about a 32 inch Insignia TV. This was ordered with the electric wall heater. So you got a little electric heater there on the left. 
Um, quite a bit of drawer space and cabinet space as well here. You can see in the first picture popping up, the dresser top actually flips up for some hidden storage, a couple shallow drawers on the top, and then you have six, seven, eight large drawers there that are deeper and some hanging closet space on the right as well. Little toe kick lighting down below. You have some overhead cabinet space up there, sliding closet doors, and they went with this new vacuum, little portable vacuum. The electric switch for your 20 gallon electric water heater right back there. Closet rod, washer dryer setup here. So you could do a combo washer dryer or a stackable washer dryer, whichever you prefer. All right, now I'm going to post some of these changes in the description and some more information down below for you as well. Uh, we're going to go outside. I want to show you around the outside of the RV, and then we're going to come back in here and close this thing up for you, show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, we are back on the outside of the brand new 2024 Cedar Creek Cottage 40 CFK2 destination trailer here. Again, 25th anniversary edition here. So we're gonna start here on the door side, kind of work our way around. First things up, we have high gloss gel coat fiberglass exterior with a lower black metal skirting, which is kind of a textured skirting. They changed up the skirting for this year. Graphics package is also changed up for the 25th anniversary edition as well. The sidewall construction is a hung fiberglass sidewall, aluminum studded construction, roughly every 12 to 16 inches on center. It is again a hung fiberglass sidewall, not a glued together laminated sidewall. So there's actually a lot more studs in the construction of this than the typical glued together RV. You have power awning, LED light strip built in close to the body of the RV, adjustable arms for tilting for water runoff, and you also have a manual override in the front arm head. The back entry door here goes into the bedroom hallway area right there. That has a traditional hover style RV step on it. That's rated for 300 pounds. It folds up into the underbody of the RV there. Most people, when they're buying these destination trailers, are typically building decks around them, skirting them, all that type of stuff. So you typically don't use those steps. Uh, I guess if you are going to move around, you might use them. But up here at the sliding glass door area, there is a removable set of more ride steps that would attach on there if you do plan on using them. Those you've seen when we were uh, in the bedroom, they were stashed underneath the bed. There is an electric outlet and cable outlet in case you wanted to add a TV or something out here if you want to. Now this particular one has aluminum wheels, easy lube hubs, and drum brakes. I'm not real sure yet about the aluminum wheel thing, if that's gonna become a standard feature or if this was just part of the prototype change for 2024. Typically on park models, people either block them, take the wheels off, skirt around them, you never see them. Uh, so they usually have steel wheels. I've got to find out and I'll post in a description below if the aluminum wheels are going to be a new standard or just a one-off. Large folding entry handle there in case you do actually use the steps. You got that there as well. Porch light up top. Deep tent safety glass windows. Now single pane windows are standard on the RV. Dual panes, which this particular one has, is a nice option. They also offer slide out awning toppers to go on top of the slide rooms. If that interests you, you can order it that way from the factory or talk with your salesperson about adding that on at the dealership. That can still be done at the dealership as well. You have a heavy duty fiberglass front cap. 
When it comes to you, uh, comes to the dealership, I guess I should say, in shipping, it will have kind of a plastic cover over the front windows and stuff, just to try and help protect them. The hitch right here is actually removable. It's a detachable hitch. So you can see in the picture popping up there, there's two uh, release points on each side where if you get to a campground that has some length restrictions, you could detach the front tongue. You'd have to figure out what you're gonna do with your gas bottles and the battery, but you could detach it and shorten up the length a couple feet there to save yourself a little bit of room if you needed to. Two 30 pound propane tanks standard with the hard bottle cover, a manual tongue jack and two and five sixteenths hitch ball, heavy duty safety chains, uh, seven way Bargman wiring plug. There is also a quick disconnect gas line right here. In case you wanted to do some sort of portable outside grill, you could do so as well. Traditional breakaway cable down there also. And you got room for one or possibly two batteries, depending on the size of the batteries, to go right there. Now, it comes with zero batteries from the RV maker. Uh, it would come with at least one battery from Couch's RV Nation if you purchase from them. In the front corner right here, you have your furnace exhausting out right here. And then there's a little round access panel right there to get you back into the hydraulic pump for the slide systems. So you could manually override it in case of an electronic failure. Also on the front corner right here, we have some very important informational stickers. I wanna pop these up for you here real quick. The first one popping up is your main production data sticker. This has the VIN number, axle sizes, uh, production date, but most importantly on this one, gross vehicle weight. That's the most you can load the RV up to Axle weight, hitch weight, everything combined do not exceed that number. Next sticker here is your unloaded vehicle weight sticker. This sticker basically tells you what the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line, and it also has the overall length on it as well. Next is your cargo carrying capacity sticker, basically just telling you how much gear you can load into the RV before you exceed that gross weight sticker. And last but not least, the tire sticker here, telling you tire size, but most importantly on this sticker, cold tire pressure. Very, very important if you travel with any RV to make sure you maintain your tire pressure. Uh, one of the biggest reasons for faulty failures on tires for RVs is people do not maintain their tire pressure and the tires cannot hold the weight of the RV properly and they tend to blow out. Also, make sure you check your speed rating on your tires. Some RV tires are not rated to go as fast as people tend to drive with these things. Uh, so that's another very important thing. And remember to check your lug nuts and also, again, lube your bearings and stuff from time to time if you're traveling. Now, if you're parking this thing permanently, like a lot of people do, it's not something you're gonna pay a whole lot of attention to unless you go to sell it and move it at that time. But if you are gonna travel, make sure you keep up with that stuff. Now, just underneath the front part of the slide out right here is one of your galley tank dump handles. You can see pop up in that picture. It's a cable handle, so the gate valves up inside the underbelly helping keep everything from freezing up in the wintertime. Um, but that is up under there, and you have a separate dump for that galley compared to what's in the back section. We'll get to here shortly. Low point water drain underneath the slide out as well for your ice maker. You can see that up there. It's got a little on off valve and a drain valve right there. So very important again, if you're doing cold weather camping and you're parking this thing somewhere uh, to keep up with that if you need to drain it out or shut it off. Up in the top center part of the slide there is your stove exhaust vent that has a flapper in it. Make sure that you open that if you're trying to cook inside. Just behind that slide out right there is the drain for that galley tank. And then just behind your axles back here is your second drain. So you could Y those together, tie everything together with PVC and all that kind of stuff if you are permanently hooked up. Or get you a Y and a couple dump hoses and kind of tie everything together that way. 
Just above the marker light there is a cable satellite inlet right there. So if you do portable satellite or cable at the campground you might be at, it feeds right in through there. Now just behind the wheel, you can see in that picture popping up right there, you have your black and bathroom sink drain handles. So you make sure you pull the toilet, let all the nasty out, pull the bath galley tank and let that kind of rinse out your dump hose area. If you do hook up permanently, do not leave the toilet handle open all the time. You could get away with leaving the galley and your gray tank open all the time. That's basically just soapy dishwater and stuff kind of running out. But your toilet's gonna have solids in it possibly, and it needs enough liquid buildup to remove everything out of there, their gravity flow. So make sure you don't just leave that handle open or you will have a real headache to deal with. Detachable power cord right here. This is a 50 amp power cord, probably about 30 feet long roughly. You have your black tank flush right here, your fresh water connection, and your city water connection as well, all right here. Just back in behind this door is going to be your 20 gallon electric water tank. You also have your water pump if you have to use your portable water system. That little black thing back there is a check valve for the black tank flush. That does fill up with water when you flush your black tank. So in the winter time, you gotta make sure you pump antifreeze into it to keep it from freezing. There's also a little fuse link down there for your water pump. You have your drain and stuff here as well and bypass for your water heater if you're winterizing it. Make sure you drain that out in the winter. Uh, and again, you got some little instructions here as well. It does have a little pump kit on it to suck the antifreeze through the system. And just down below is a fresh water tank drain. You can see popping up in that picture again. Also, the unit has a sectionalized enclosed underbelly. Makes it a lot easier to work on if there is any type of malfunction compared to those one piece underbellies. All right, just a real quick peek up here at the roof. You can see things up here as far as plumbing stack vents, uh, skylights, AC systems, TV antennas, a lot of goodies up here. You do have to get up here from time to time and uh, basically maintain your seams and seals and stuff. Very, very important to get up there and check things out. On around to the back side, you have a traditional flat back fiberglass rear end. Again, nice high gloss gel coat finish on it. All right, we are gonna head back inside. I wanna close this thing up for you, show you what it looks like closed real quick. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are back up in the brand new 2024 Cottage 40 CFK2 here. And I just wanted to show you what it looked like closed real quick. So I've already closed everything up. So I just wanted to kind of run you through here, kind of speed this part up for you a little bit. But we do have the bed in, it comes up really close to the dresser area here. You could still come in here and technically use it if you needed to come in here and go to bed. Could access your little closet area and stuff here. Your overhead cabinets as well. But the stuff at the foot of the bed, other than the dresser top two drawers, maybe the next two down, you can somewhat get to. Doesn't interfere with your hallway area at all. So you got plenty of room for the hallway to come in here. You could use your restroom if you needed to. Does not affect the restroom area at all. Now coming up into this part, you would have to step over the trifold sofa to get into this center section here but you are not really getting up into your sink and refrigerator area unless you are climbing over the counter. So you would have to bump that area out. But you do have some basic access to many of the things. Now let's step outside here real quick, show you what it looks like with the slides closed. Again, please be sure to check out the folks at Couches RV Nation. They are one of the largest internet discount dealers in the country. They'll definitely save you a lot of money on a new RV. They deliver these things all over the country. They are one of the largest number one selling dealers out there. So definitely give them a chance. Thanks again.